Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. Finally, Geeky was sick for a couple days. Still not feeling great, but uh, I'm here. And it's not that thing we can't talk about. She's just she's just not feeling that well. Yeah, I think it's allergies or meat fine as something, meets ear infection or something. So Yeah, but she's here today. We're gonna talk about Simon and Schuster Publishing. Now you're probably wondering why we're talking about Simon and Schuster Publishing. There's a couple things, because it actually bleeds over into some stuff we've been talking about. Yep. Simon & Schuster is owned by Viacom CBS, which owns, you know, obviously CBS All Access. They're talking about expanding their streaming service and they're looking to cut some dead weight. They're also the publishing house that handles all the distribution for Viz graphic novels mm -hmm. and Shonen Jump yeah. here in the US. They're actually the largest graphic novel publisher here in the US and they're looking to, uh, CBS is looking to unload them. Now this is huge because they're one of the last big publishing houses left and it just kind of shows where even book publishing ranks, comic book publishing ranks in the wake of the streaming wars. Well, it's funny to me too, because they're talking about all of it, which is the book publishing arm, but it's, the comics is a tiny, tiny part of that. Yeah. And all of it, they even say in the one article, it's like, yeah, it doesn't, it, 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 it's nothing to us. They basically say that yeah. in the article, which we'll talk about in a bit. Yeah, so before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. We're almost 100,000. I think we're only like 2,500 away. Oh, uh, yeah. A little over 2,000 away. 200 away. Yeah, so thank you for the support, guys. All right, so a bunch of different places talking about this. Viacom wants to unload Simon & Schuster Publishing. Uh, they want $1.2 billion. So here's the thing. This is like a huge publisher. They publish, uh, you know, Stephen King. They publish, uh, let's see here, Judy Bloom, a bunch of other, you know, big. I mean, back in the day, Simon & Schuster was one of the biggest yep. publishing houses. And it just kind of shows even where books, I think, uh, where books rank. Well, and books are down, but if you think books are down, con con not comic books and graphic novels are even lower than totem pole. Um, so many of these publishing houses act like that's just like a, you know, a tiny little entity among their stuff. They don't really even care about it, promote it. Hardly any books even get picked up anymore for comics, graphic novels. Yeah, so it's, you know, they say it's a marquee brand, but I mean, 1.4 <laughs> 20, 30 years ago, yeah. Um, we will look to complete a transaction that maximizes its value once the market stabilizes, says Robert Backish, chief executive. Um, Viacom CBS, the newly combined business controlled by Shari. Again, this is another this is another business that merged. Viacom CBS used to, I believe they used to be the same company. They split. And then they got back together because they're talking about talking about doing a streaming service. Uh, with Paramount, you know, kind of like HBO Max is right. doing right now. And that's going to, you know, they're going to expand on CBS All Access uh, and all of that. So, um, you know, it's interesting that th the streaming wars are actually impacting traditional book publishing. You know, it's I, I mean, the streaming wars are like killing everything. Yeah. Uh, but they don't think it's 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 really not that big. If it was a big deal to their company, right, if it meant a lot to the company, they wouldn't be looking to, to unload it. All right, just to show you how little they think of Simon & Schuster because it's not it's not a video product. You you sent this article over from Comic yeah. Book Resources, mm -hmm. Comic Book Resources, and it is buried. It's buried in in uh, the Times article. But if you read all the way down and they, they zeroed in on this, it's not a core asset of the company. It's not video based. It doesn't have significant connectivity to our broader businesses. He added. Uh, that there has been interest in acquiring Simon and Schuster, and concluded as the market stabilizes, we'll yeah, engage in the he, process. You missed that part. Yeah. So basically, they said, yeah, it's a marquee brand, but it really isn't that important to our business. Uh, so we're just getting rid of it. Yeah, and um, you know, we're we're seeing this more and more. You know, we talked about what's, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. What could potentially be up with DC Comics? Same kind of thing to Warner Media. Uh, it doesn't mean a lot to them. I mean, Batman and Superman, Wonder Woman obviously mm -hmm. mean a lot to them as cartoons or movies, you know, merchandise, t-shirts, but the comic books themselves don't mean right, a lot. Right, but they have those things that they can merchandise and make t-shirts out of. Um, they don't really, this is this is more like, you know, graphic novels and stuff like that. A lot of them are like, especially the middle-aged ones are the same people that always get the deals and they don't sell that well, frankly. No. Um, but they just keep, you know, giving them deals for whatever reason. The only thing that they, they, they might have is they had a deal in place with the Viz um, to, to do merchandise that way. Um, but yeah, yeah, but Viz now, they're kind of combining with Crunchyroll. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very possible, like, I mean, I could see Warner 
you know, uh, scooping up Viz or something. I think so too. I mean, Warner, um, you know, I, I, they're, yeah, but then I don't know because they're cutting so many corners. Would they go, or they just be like, we'll buy this part, we won't buy the book part. And if everybody wants to buy the Viz and the Show and Jump, is anybody going to be one, wanting to buy the? The, the book publishing part. Yeah, because that's the thing. Simon & Schuster, look, I mean, and this is true of most book publishers, they don't actually really own anything. They're published other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. They take a percentage, but they don't actually really own much of anything. They don't have any original IP. But the thing is, is that, you know, the authors, I mean, anymore it just kind of shows the content creators, the individuals have more power uh, these days anyway. Because honestly, anybody can publish a book through Amazon. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you. Any other, every other day in our local paper, it's local author publishes book. And it's like, wow, they get a book deal? No, they publish it on Amazon. I'm like, well, who hasn't? Anybody can do that. Yeah. Anybody can do that. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, book publishers, it's so weird we're even bringing a book publisher into a conversation about streaming. But Simon Schuster has been around forever. Now there were at one point uh, six, six main publish, six big publishers. You know, we had uh, Hashit, uh, Harper Collins, Macmillan, Penguin, Random House. They merged Simon Schuster. And now I wouldn't be surprised if one of these other publishers bought Simon Schuster, and it winds up being like Simon Schuster, Penguin, Random House, or something. I don't know. Then just start using like initials. That. You know, just just make sure the initials don't spell out something like, you know, shit or something like that. But, you know. Yeah, so it's, I, I mean, look, you know, book publishers are even being affected by the streaming wars. It's, it's crazy. But the thing is, you know, where Simon Schuster fits in with, with our audience anyway is they are the publisher of Viz here in the States of Shonen Jump. Um, you know, and they publish a, a ton of manga. And it's actually benefited them because since manga is on an upswing right now, in the United States, uh, Viz is the biggest publisher, 23% yeah. share of the market. I think that's, you know, kind of short-sighted on them. But, you know, but they, even even with that being the case, it's still that them. It doesn't perform for a company. It's not, it, 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 yeah. you know, it's not enough. So, not enough. you know, geez, some people should get together and just go buy it. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, one point whatever billion they're asking for, 1.2 billion. You know, if you got some of these authors together, like Stephen King or whatever, they could come up with the money mm. to do it. You know, I mean, that's nothing. That's really nothing in the grand scheme of things. And when you're talking these, you know, massive, mega, you know, multi-billion dollar <laughs> There's an Indiegogo for you. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We'll do an Indiegogo to buy Simon & Schuster. Um, no, I think they'll probably be scooped up. I, I honestly think they'll probably merge with another publisher. Most likely, Or something. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's interesting because we're not sure where that's going to leave Viz. I think they'll be attractive to other publisher, especially if they do. If they're someone who does graphic novels and things because of Viz. Yeah. Unless Viz pulls out because they're sold to somebody else. I don't know. Uh, I don't know because now Viz and, and Crunchyroll are working together too. So, I mean. But that's all... more for the, 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 the video and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's just a really interesting uh, turn of events to see a book publisher um, you know, it becoming collateral damage as these companies. Not, I don't think it's that that surprising. No, well, we saw. Okay, so because I mean, we've been saying this. We keep saying this. Everybody's like, you know, they, and, and in comic book circles, especially. Oh my God, they get so pissed when you say this. But it's the truth. The truth of the matter is. Um, you know, this is how it's going. The market's folding, and the people are like, well, well, young adult books and graphic novels are on the upswing. Not really. The manga is. Yeah. I'm sure some of them are, but you have to understand too that maybe uh, that these companies might do a handful of books a year uh, that aren't like these that they're reprinting for other companies. Yeah. Their own their own deals might only be a handful a year, so maybe like ten people might get a book deal through these places. It's not like you know, oh, oh. You know, we're just going to go there and I'll get deals. And I mean, I'm seeing people who, who sucked ass enough to get a deal, even though um, I don't understand how they did because they frankly aren't that good. But they, they kissed enough butt, made sure they were at the right places, talked to the right people all the time. Next thing you know, oh, look, I have a, I have a new book coming out. It looks like a knockoff of other books. Um, yeah, we're seeing that enough. But like I said, and in, of those 10 spots, probably five of them are people who keep getting deals whether they sell or not because they're friends with somebody. So no, it's not the saving grace that everybody keeps, oh, let's go get a solid graphic novel. Make a, it's not like that. And even, yeah, in the graphic novel thing, and we talked about this before with the comic book industry collapsing, there are a handful, it's just like uh, sports, you know, actually I think sports, you have, a, you have a better shot at becoming a professional ball player, making a couple million dollars a year that, than you do becoming a graphic novelist making any decent money in right. the mainstream. And then they don't and the advances keep dropping. So you might get like a five or six thousand dollar, five, ten thousand dollar advance and you have to do two or three years of work to get you more. 
yeah, it's uh, the advances are not good now. They used to be higher. Even 10, 15 years ago, the advances were higher. We're hearing places like Scholastic are only giving out like $5,000 advances to people. Yeah, I, depending on who you are. I mean, if you're yeah. somebody who supposedly has a name. And then meanwhile, YouTubers who have no book experience whatsoever are coming in and they're taking some of those deals because they're giving them book deals right left for their channel. <laughs> So there, there's That's 10 true. spots, five of them just went to YouTubers. Do you have any idea how many, I mean, these people- and They're getting more than $10,000 advances. Yeah, they're not even, it's so weird. Like you go to Walmart and you see, you see graphic novels or other kinds of books about or by YouTubers. And I'm like, these people aren't even comic book people. They're not no. even, they were never even trying to do comic books. They got in, they're making more money than people who spent their entire lives trying to uh, break into the graphic novel scene just for, to them, it's basically just more ancillary merchandise. Right, that's all know? it is. Like, oh, we get to write a book, that's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, and they're not even doing the work half the time, somebody else is doing it for them. Yeah. So it's just, you know, that, that's what they're doing. I think anymore, like a lot of these places, like uh, that's how Rana Telgemeier started getting her book deals. She was doing art for them already on established property. Scholastic, yeah. Yeah, and then they just let her have, because she knew somebody she could pitch a book, and then like, yeah. oh yeah, we like that, we'll do it. And because of the, the, the agent she had and the deal she got, they're going to promote it more. Because a lot of times people forget, unless you have worked in about promotion and stuff, they're not even going to promote you half the time. You have to promote yourself. There's so many things involved in this, and people can sit there and say we're full of crap till the cows come home. But we've been down this road. We had a, a huge agent, well, agency. I'm like, I said, agent's kind of a. Pss. But we had a huge <laughs> agency out of New York City, one of the big, big, big ones. Yeah, and we were repped by them. Yeah. And then we got to see firsthand how this shit goes down. And it is a lot of crap. It is, it is a, it is a, a uh, nepotistic. Um, you know, you know, checkbox laden load of shit. Basically, the cake is a lie. There's so many people that are trying to think it, that they're going to break into to comics doing graphic novels for a major publisher. And uh, this Simon & Schuster selling off, I think, is actually going to make less spaces available. Right. And it's only got those those spots are going to go to and the right going, kind of people. And they're going to, if they're not the right kind of person by checkbox, they go to the right kind of person by YouTube, you know, channel size. I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm not trying to make break people's dreams. I'm just telling you the way it is. And a lot of places don't even look at your, unless you have, they won't even look at your work unless you're submitted through an agent anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it's going to get a lot harder to, to push through the mainstream. But honestly, at this point, I'm going to tell you, I don't think it's worth going through the mainstream. I agree, 100%. If you're doing comic books, I do not think nope. it's worth it. 100% agree. Uh, anymore, because we know what the numbers are like. We know what the money's like. And not everybody's going to be Raina Telgemeier. To be Raina Telgemeier, you need a time machine. You need to go back about 15 years and get in on the ground floor. I think floor. Raina is Raina Telgemeier because they, of the money they put behind Raina Yeah, well, I, that's part Scholastic true. runs yeah. the book fairs, guys. Who, and if they're yeah. promoting a book to all the schools across the country, who do you think is going to sell the most? I'm just, you know, pointing that out there. Yeah, and hey, if I... was no, no shade against her, I'm just no, saying. No, not at all. I would do the same thing. Yeah, I'd be totally. Like, I'd be like, if I get to be number one, if you throw a bunch of money, you know, marketing at my book and I get to, to blow everybody else out of the water and park it on top of the New York Times well, bestseller that's list. that's a whole other thing. Do you want to talk about the New York Times bestseller list? There's a reason why all these, they had they used to have a separate category for graphic novels and uh, a lot of these people were parked on it because it was, that's all bought and paid for. It's all, it's all yeah. manipulation. Yeah, it's, and that's why they got rid of the category at all. And then everybody had a fit about that because, because it, apples to apples, they're not going to be number one. No. Their book sales are crap compared to actual book sales. Yeah, Even what? hybrids count in the actual book sales, not the graphic novels. And the hybrids are kicking your ass. Let's go back to what the head of Viacom is saying. He says it's not a core asset of the company. It's not video-based. doesn't have significant connectivity to our broader business's translation. The books don't make us any damn money. Right. They, uh, they we don't. We don't care. And, then, and, they, and that's what I'm taking the lion's share of the money. A lot of times authors don't get jack unless you have a really good deal negotiated because you have, you're a big name or something. And it's like, you know, people are like, well, you're just destroying our dreams. We're not trying to destroy your dreams. But here's the thing. I'm not going to lie to you either. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that the sky is green when it's blue because you want to hear the sky is green. Would I make a lot more green if I told you the sky was green? Yes. But am I going to do that? No, I'm not. Because I'm not going to like just lie to people to make more money because they'll, they'll come to listen to what I have to say because it's what they want to hear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Call us the Simon Cowell of comics. I don't care. <laughs> it's just the way it Simon is. Simon Cowell of comics. Somebody has to be. God knows somebody has to be. Uh, because there's a lot of people out there selling pipe dreams. So yeah, comics is going to get harder to, to break into, uh, at least going through the, the mainstream. Um, DC Comics, there's been a lot of talk about how they might get gone. Now, I don't know 
what's going to happen exactly. But the fact that the Motley Fool is even weighing in on, on it at this point, that they fired uh, Dan DiDio, mm -hmm. that they are paring down. It seems like they're paring down. Now, they might keep them around, but it could be the same thing with Warner Media, where they're like, you know, publishing comic books isn't part of our core business. We're not going to sell DC Comics. Right. But we're not going to print comics. But I don't think people either. realize this. Like, I don't think they're realizing. I have a chart somewhere to find it. Who's owned by whom? And like right now, when you're talking about DC, you're talking about AT and T. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about Simon and Schuster, you're talking about CBS Viacom. Yep. When you're talking about Marvel, you're talking about Disney. Mm -hmm. So these aren't even the companies they used to be. It's all owned by people who are doing streaming and they want intellectual property to to make things off of. That's what they're buying and selling yeah. for. That's what they care about. So at the end of the day, it isn't even about publishing anymore, guys. I'm sorry, you're not going to want to hear. It, it's like what's going to make them the most money and how can they convert it to streaming that's what it's about because the people that own these things are the people that own networks yeah it's all about it's all about hollywood uh comic books are all about hollywood right now so the people who are going to continue to publish comic books uh now if these companies don't continue because they want to strip mine it for tv shows and and you know movies you know they'll probably get out of it i think some of the smaller the smaller press companies will be the ones who publish the comic books. Individuals will be the ones who publish comic books. Um, I think there's going to be a lot more print on demand. I think, you know, people aren't going to want to get stuck with but all these But without these big companies, you don't have the marketing push behind right. them either. So yeah, you're going to have more control over who get it, uh, printing your own things and all that. But remember, unless you have the money to back it up, you're not going to have the marketing, uh, you know, leverage to go along with it. Yeah, they're not going to, your books aren't going to get into Walmart or anything like that. Now, um, now some people can still get into Walmart, you know, but are people going to buy the comic books there? Because I was excited when DC Comics put the, the giant books for five bucks at Walmart. I'm like, that's a really good deal. And they don't seem to be selling very well. No. Like the Walmarts we go to, there's like piles of them. Mm -hmm. Like they're not, like people are still doing it. it. They're doing it, but it's, it doesn't, the, like there's a lot of fanfare about, it, but where they put them, it's in a really stupid place. It's like, off to the side over by the uh, Pokemon cards and the cigarettes. If they were yeah. smart, they'd put it back in the toy aisle next to the figures. Yes, that would be that would be brilliant. Or put it in the movie section next to the, the you know the section that they're selling the movies that are based on those characters. That would be the smartest thing to do. I don't know why they shove them where they shove them. The uh, the Funko Pop area. I can tell them of, where to shove things. You know yeah, so. that'll work for their you know work to them for their <laughs> advantage. So anyway, guys, this just shows where where print is in uh, regards to the streaming wars that Simon and Schuster that they're gonna they're gonna divest themselves of it and that uh, we don't know what's gonna happen to dc comics i think we're gonna see a lot more of this uh i expect for something to happen with uh, marvel comics at some oh, point I'm sure with uh disney not doing so hot uh something will probably happen as people gear up for the streaming wars so we're gonna wrap this one up yep please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants we'll have more videos later today okay, bye hey guys thanks for watching clownfish tv please consider supporting the channel go to clownfishsupport.com that's clownfishsupport.com and if you want to join our community go to clownfishtalk.com that's clownfishtalk.com please subscribe ring the bell for notifications we will talk to you next time